Hello, welcome to another weekly vlog. It is Tuesday evening and I am headed out. I ended up working from home today. In fact, we'll talk about it a little bit later this week. I think I might just go back to working from home full time um, for a couple of different reasons. Not what I wanted to kick this vlog off with. So we'll talk about that later. But I did work from home today because I needed to get, I needed to leave for dance earlier than normal because I'm taking care of a friend's dog. And they left this morning for the airport and so we kind of talked it out. I said I can either go before dance or after dance. Either one really works for me. And they, we kind of decided to go before dance. We better given the time that I'll go tomorrow morning. So I, uh, yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna head there and then I'll just leave straight from their apartment to get to dance. It's about the same amount of time to get to my apartment or to get to dance for my apartment. So it works out. And I also get lots of extra steps in because not only am I walking to their apartment from my apartment, but then I am going to take him, the dog, for a walk because he's a big black lab and he needs a good walk. There's this co-working space that I always walk by that's not too far from our apartment that I like keep wanting to try. Anyways, the other thing that I'm going to do or the other errand I'm gonna run while on the way to their apartment is I sent some photos to get printed. So I spent a lot of time on the plane, both there and back. I like listened to a podcast and then cleaned through photos. And so not only did I send last week's photos to stay like on top of my memory keeping, but I also sent like 10 old weeks. So like all of April, all of May, and like a couple of weeks into June. So I am gonna stop and pick those up on my way. Okay, so I know I've talked about how I get my photos printed before, but I was responding to YouTube comments before I left today and somebody asked about it again. And I honestly have no idea what video that was. It was a long time ago. I shared it in a vlog. So I thought I would go ahead and share it with you again in case you are new here or you don't wanna go dig up the video, but you do wanna start getting your photos printed in smaller sizes at the drugstore. So I get them printed at the drugstore. I've been doing this for years because it is way less expensive than one of those little photo printers. And in my experience, the photo printers, just the quality is not fantastic. And so I just get them printed at the drugstore. I cut them apart and then I use an adhesive roller to stick them in my planner. So I start by going through the photos and I add all of the ones that I know I'm gonna get printed into favorites. And it's usually anywhere from 10 to 15 per week on any given occasion. Obviously like this past week, there was a lot more from the wedding, but it definitely varies. And then I'll go through all the photos that are in favorites. I will turn them into square format. And then sometimes I will brighten them up just a little bit. Kind of depends on the photo. If I, I don't do a ton of editing, but sometimes I will just do the like auto adjust like option on in the photos app if the photo is too rectangular and cannot be turned into a square i use an app called white border and like that's what i did to this one here in the corner and i turn it into a square with the white edges and keep it kind of horizontal then i use an app called pick stitch to put it into a collage like this i paid for the paid version of pick stitch a long time ago so i'm not quite sure what features i talk about here are only in the paid version but i do a a uh, three by three square in pick stitch. And then I remove the borders so that there's no borders so the pictures are as big as they can be. And then I save that. And then I go back into white border and I add a little white border around the whole photo. And that is because I have found that Walgreens will print all the way to the edge. Like I added a white border on this photo and they still printed it all the way to the edge. I learned that trick from Taylor from Tattoo Teacher Plans. I don't know, like, I don't know why they do it that way, but that's, that's kind of the trick there. Then I upload them into the Walgreens app, send them to print, and they usually take about an hour. Um, like I said, most weeks, it's somewhere between like nine, and actually this week there was, I had a full two pages, so 18 photos. Um, I will probably not end up using all of them because fitting 18 photos into the weekly layout is a lot. But then when there are weeks where I don't need the whole, like I don't have 18 photos, I'll just leave blank spaces. Um, when I'm going, when I'm doing on top of it and I'm doing every single week, that's just, how it is because I don't have any other photos to put there. When I am going back in time and doing all of the old photos, I could add on, like I could do multiple weeks on one page, but it's easier for me to keep the photos organized if I just keep every printout to one week, if that makes sense. So yeah, these are the ones that I just picked up today. Like I said, it's from last week and then April, May and half of June. It's probably gonna take me a while to actually 
do all the memory keeping of this, but I will show you the weeks as I finish them. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about that whole process that I just talked about, um, any of the app names or anything else. So this is Bo and we're going for a walk. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna get the pigeons? You're gonna get the pigeons? He's a good boy. He's a good boy. My friends, Jesse and Dan got him when we were seniors in college. So he is nine. Whoa. Whoa, we're old, Bo. We are old. Hey, it is Wednesday. It is lunchtime. I am hopping into the kitchen to get my crock pot meal in. I've mentioned this before, but I pretty much always try to do a crock pot meal on Wednesdays. That way when lattes with Lincoln is over at seven, I can just immediately like eat dinner and don't have to worry about that. Even though Sam is gone this week, I can't remember if I mentioned that somewhere else in earlier in the vlog. Sam decided to stay in Houston for the week to see friends and clients and celebrate the holiday with his family. And so I am on my own this week. I think I mentioned it in last week's weekly vlog when I talked all about meal planning. If you missed last week's weekly vlog, I showed how I planned the meals for this week. And now I'm actually executing on that plan, which still includes a crock pot meal on Wednesdays. I have been struggling a little bit and I would love to hear your thoughts or what your family does down in the comments. I saw a YouTube comment recently suggesting that it was somebody who had watched um, the very first video I posted about going back to the office that day in the life vlog and saying how maybe on the days that I go back into the office, which I know we still need to talk about, I make that my takeout night. And I just struggle to do any weeknight that's take. I know this is backwards, right? Like the weekdays are busier, so really those should be the takeout nights. But on the weekends, I just don't feel like cooking. I don't like cooking. I don't want to be in the kitchen on the weekends. I don't want to deal with it. And I would just rather be able to order in on like Fridays and Sundays. We usually end up going out on Saturdays, usually with friends or something social. And I just would rather do all of that than to have a weeknight that I order takeout. So I just love to know what does your family do when it comes to takeout. I know we've talked about this before and how takeout is so much easier for me here in New York than it is for a lot of places across the country or even across the world. But I would love to know what your family does in terms of balancing home meals and takeouts. Right now I am reading the book, We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers, which, oh my gosh, I highly recommend this for every single person. I'm not done with it yet. I'm like probably 80% of the way through it. Highly recommend. I think every woman would get value from reading this book, whether you, it, it is not directed to just at business owners, but one of the things she talks about a lot in that book is not spending your time doing things that you don't want to do. So if you don't want to cook, outsource that. And whether that's meal deliveries, whether that's getting takeout regularly, whether that's like her family hired a personal chef. She goes, it's less expensive than you think it actually will be. I mean, we are obviously in no place to be hiring a personal chef right now. We're also only cooking for two. And so there are easier ways that I can manage that. But someday, like that is a very aspirational goal for me to have given what I like to do and not to like I just don't like cooking like it's just not something I I even feel relaxed or enjoying when I get to come into the kitchen I literally the only reason that we cook often instead of eat out all the time is for budgeting and for health purposes because it is way better for me to cook from home than to order out anyways just some random Wednesday lunchtime ramblings for you but I need to get this going um, I spent the first part of my lunch hour on a call with my very first one-on-one -on -one coaching student uh, Rebecca it was just a joy to talk to you and I had it was so much fun for me and I I know it was valuable we talked about in general how to define your goals how to pick goals that are important to you and then really dug into her specific goal and like defined what is that goal why it's important to her and then we figured out what her action steps are going to be for this first week between now and the next time that we chat and she has I can't even share it with you because it's so special and unique but her goal is just oh, I'm so excited I'm so excited for her I'm so excited for the world when this goal becomes a thing and I just it was just a really great call and it put me in a really great mood all right, it is Wednesday evening. It's about 7.45 and I'm not gonna end up eating dinner before I have a one-on-one -on -one call at eight. I'm honestly not that hungry, so I'm kind of okay with it. But after the live, I which ended at seven, I kind of just sat here um, and did some things on my computer, some YouTube stuff, and then some online shopping. So we spent a lot of today's live talking about December Daily, which 
Um, I will link that live if you want to check that out. December Daily is a memory keeping project that I've participated in in the past. I have videos all about it from the last two years and the products go on sale tomorrow. And in the past, I've only purchased products from Allie Edwards directly, who's the creator of the project, but I'm shopping at a couple other places. So let me tell you what they are. The first one is L Studio. And I really like the journaling cards. So Allie Edwards, I normally get the main kit, which includes a bunch of journaling cards, but I don't plan to get that this year because I just, there's a lot of stuff in the main kit that I don't really like. So I'm, I have some journaling cards in my cart right now at L Studio. The other one is just scrapbook.com. And what I have in my cart there are some organizers. So Allie Edwards this year came out with a, like an organizer box. And I was talking to someone about it it felt a little bit overpriced or just a little bit expensive for what like the quality looked like um, when I saw her like show it in a video and that was what was holding me back from buying it not that I wouldn't use it and the person I was chatting with chatting with directed me to scrapbooks.com and they have some compartment like boxes that are like the same concept except just plain that are like half the price of the Ali Edwards one so I have those in my cart there and then the last one is paper person which somebody on the live recommended and they have not released their like holiday collections yet they don't release them until october so i haven't quite decided if i'm gonna go ahead and click check out on i, I am gonna purchase from ali edwards tomorrow because some of those products that i like from her shop will go out of stock but i think i might hold off on these other two places until i see the releases from paper person and then and then go from there the other thing i'm going to try to do tonight is i have this one-on-one -on -one call tonight at eight and then after that i have a fantasy football draft for my work league and while that draft is going on i'm going to kind of go through and organize my december daily supplies from last year and the year before because i'm sure i still have some leftover from two years ago and just kind of revisit what i have in that collect like in my stash before i decide like finalize what i'm going to purchase tomorrow when the alley edwards projects go on sale that was a lot of information like I said, we talked about December Daily more in that live. If you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comments. All right, I got dressed. I'm ready to go to dance. And this is what I put on. I've got like a gray pattern legging on and this just blue this is like an Amazon workout shirt. And then I remembered. It's game day, baby. The NFL is back. It is the first day of the NFL season. And of course we are kicking off the season with my team, the Dallas Cowboys, playing the reigning Super Bowl champion. I swear, I know that the Cowboys are a very popular team. I don't know if I've ever really explained the the start of my Cowboys fandom. My mom is originally from San Antonio. Her parents are from, well, her mom's from Pennsylvania, but my, my grandfather on that side is from San Antonio, like for multiple generations. And so they have been Cowboys fans for a very long time. My dad, however, became a Cowboys fan when he was growing up in England. My dad lived in England until he was like 14, 15. And at the time that he was growing up and watching American football, because my grandparents are from the US, they were just stationed over there. My grandfather's retired military, they were stationed in England. So he was American watching American football and the Cowboys were America's team. And with, you know, Roger Staubach at the quarterback position, just like he just, he wanted to be a Cowboys fan. And so he became a Cowboys fan while he still lived there. And then they happened to move to San Antonio when my grandfather retired from the military and it was just convenient that he lived in Texas. So anyways, that is how I'm a Cowboys fan. And I do feel like that if the Cowboys are planning on playing the reigning Super Bowl champs during the season at some point, because if you're not familiar with football, the teams at which they play throughout the season is all dependent on their division, their conference, where they fell last year in the results, their conference, and then they play one division from the opposite conference. And so they're not always gonna play that team. They can't always make that the first game of the season, but if they're gonna play the reigning Super Bowl champs, it feels like they always put that game on the first game of the season and have the Cowboys like start off the season with a loss. We'll see. I have a lot of faith in the Cowboys this season. It is very dependent on the health of our quarterback who went down mid season last year. If he is healthy and back in his A game, it could be a good year. But let's talk working from home. I talked about this briefly on yesterday's Lattes with Lakin, but I mentioned it earlier in this vlog, and so I just wanted to kind of close the loop on that, put a bow on it, if you will. Hi, Charlie. Hi. <laughs> There's a kitty in the shot. So, I, if you just did, you had the full picture, I do work a full-time nine-to-five job that up until last March was in an office, and I commuted to the office 
Monday through Friday, nine to five. Since the very beginning of last March, I have been working from home. In June, they started to allow people to come back to the office voluntarily. And the plan was at that time for us to come back full-time in September, but full-time now was going to be three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday in the office, Mondays and Fridays working from home. And so because we moved and I now live within walking distance of my office and it's just kind of, I mean, it's a change of scenery and it's nice. I thought let's inch our way back into working in the office instead of going from zero to three at the beginning of September, let's take small steps. So the plan was in July, I was going to do one day a week in August. I was going to do two days a week and then I'd be ready to go in September when it was three days a week. So that was pretty consistent in July. I went one day a week in August. I started going two days a week. At some point in August, they decided it was no longer going to be September and they were going to move it to October. And I thought it's fine. I'll just keep doing two days a week until they make us do three days a week. Well, then I made the dance company and I have rehearsals on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which were the days I was going into the office. And at first I was like, okay, it's fine. It actually might be better because I'll already be closer to the subway. And so I'll just bring my dance clothes with me and go straight to the subway after dance and it'll all work out. And then it just got to be a little bit overwhelming and packing up sometimes three meals because if I'm not hungry for breakfast before I leave, I would pack, pack breakfast, lunch, and dinner to have before I went to dance and my dance clothes and then sometimes my personal laptop or something plan with like and related to work on during lunch and a book for the subway and it just got to be a lot of things to pack up for the office and even though I am within walking distance I didn't want to carry all that stuff to the office two days a week so I was already kind of debating unvolunteering from going into the office it does not matter to my boss he actually lives up in Westchester he typically when he comes into the office he comes into the New York office very rarely he typically works out of our White Plains location he has no plans on coming back to the office until they tell him to so he, do he doesn't have a preference then we got an email that said it is no longer going to be October we don't know when it's going to be which I feel like really means it's going to be January and they just aren't ready to say that yet uh, because it feels a little odd to have <laughs> Charlie's tail. It feels a little odd to have us come back like in November in the middle of flu season and then to immediately have everybody take time off for Thanksgiving and then the winter holidays. So it kind of feels like it, they it's going to be January but they just haven't said it yet. Right now it's just indefinite. It's not October and they've always told us since the beginning uh, well not since the beginning but since like last June they have told us they would always give us a 30 day head start. Like we would always know at least 30 days before we needed to be back in the office. So I am going to unvolunteer from going into the office at least until the end of dance because that is October 23rd. So the earliest we could possibly go back at this point is like that first week of November. And so even if I don't really have that leeway anymore, I still started to go back to the office. I have a feel for what it is going to be like, and you know, with the new commute and all those kinds of things, but it's just too much right now. So at least for the next six weeks while I still have dance, I'm going to stay working from home. I actually told my boss this today that I'm not going to go back to the office anymore. Um, regularly, I might still stop by every now and then if I want to, if, for whatever reason, um, uh, but I'm not going to go in regularly until after dance. And then how regularly I go then is going to depend on what the plan is. Obviously, if we're going back in November, I'll just immediately start probably going to three days and just do it. If we're planning on January, I might try the small steps again and do like one day in November, two days in December, and then be ready for January. We'll see. Cross that bridge, cross that bridge when it comes to it for now. I'm going to work from home full time. So it's just nice. It's nice to not have to worry about like packing everything up for the day before the day even starts. So now it is five o'clock. I'm going to do my communication routine like always and then leave for dance a little. I'm leaving a little bit early. If you watched last week's vlog, I think I talked about it. I didn't get to go to dance last Thursday because of the flooding here in the city. Um, there was no way, there was no subway for me to get there. So one of the choreographers who's also in the other dance is meeting me a little bit earlier. Um, she's also my friend, my friend Lisa, meeting me a little bit earlier to go over the stuff from last week that I missed. All right, I have the camera in top down mode because I have two things to share with you. Charlie also wants to be a part of this activity. I have a couple things I did on my iPad that I want to share with you and then I also have a new planner. Let's start with the iPad. So one of the things I was actually recently talking to some members of the Patreon community about is methods for tracking goals 
in a like that are bigger than just putting them in my power sheets. So for example, which by the way, I'm a few days behind my power sheets. I need to check some things off. But some things like my weekly action items are to work on my memory keeping weeks and to work on my book notes. And while these are the action items and that's why they're here in my power sheets and that is what gets put in my planner, what about the actual pieces that I'm working on, like the list of the broken down full goal, like all of the memory keeping weeks I need to do still and all of the books that I need to do book notes. So that is what I decided to start tracking in my iPad. So I use an app called GoodNotes and I have lots of different like GoodNotes um, folders and uh, what are these called? Little notebooks. So I have goal ideas, running list, Patreon headers. Those are like the um, the posts I put in the Patreon Facebook group. I've got a plan with Lakin folder, a merch folder, podcasts. This is for like podcasts that I want to pitch um, to be a guest on, meal planning, wild you, an online course that I took, and then some lazy genius printables. I just realized you can't read any of those, but those are all my other folders. But for now, we're operating in the goal ideas notebook, which not only has where I keep all of my running goal lists. So I have I think I've mentioned this in a few places, but I have a page that I'm not gonna share because some of the things I put on those pages are like just for my own thoughts and not something I'm ready to share yet. So I have a goal idea list right now. I have a running list for Q4 of 2021. I have a running goal idea list for October of 2021. So I usually always have the next month and the next quarter. This one, now, right now they happen to be switched because it's we're about to start a new quarter. Um, and then I have 2022 goal ideas. And then I have a long-term goal idea. So things I wanna do someday, but they're not gonna happen in 2022. Then I also have a bunch of other random pages in this notebook that are associated with specific goals. So the two that I recently made and wanted to share with you are for my book notes. So I have basically three weeks left that I'm going to try to finish up my book notes. It's this week, next week, and the week after. And then if I do three a week, I know the goal is to only do two a week, but I kind of, I looked at what I had left. The last week actually may only have two unless I finish a book by then. So not only did I put these little circles so that I could check them off when I did them, I actually wrote down which books I was going to do. And I kind of tried to group them together, like by theme. Really, I put how to be, we should all be millionaires and profit first together. How not to die doesn't totally go with those. And then um, all of these are all, all kind of habit based, power of habit, atomic habits, good morning, good life. And then 100 days to brave and a simplified life. And then if I get through the, the nonfiction book I'm reading now, then I will get to that one as well. Then the other list I made was for my memory keeping week. So right now I'm trying to do the current week and two past weeks in order to get all caught up. And my original goal was to finish all this in Q3. Well, that didn't happen because I just got behind a number of reasons. But now I kind of redid the math and if I get back on track with doing the current week and two past weeks, I could be done by November 15th. We're going out of town for the week of Thanksgiving and then once I get back from Thanksgiving, it will be December daily and so I would like to be all caught up with that. So that is the current plan. So I listed out all the weeks that I haven't done yet prior to the current weeks. And then I listed all the upcoming current weeks. I also highlighted the ones that I've already gotten photos printed. I'm almost caught up with photos. I am going to get to that by the end of this month. And then it will just be going through the current weeks, but then also memory keeping the past week. So just some ideas. If your goals are not the same goals as mine, I just in I'm encouraging you to maybe consider another place to track goals besides the action items in your power sheets, your Moxie Life, whatever goal planner you're using. Another example of a Patreon example that I was discussing with her was debt payoff. She feels like she puts the payments in her power sheets and she gets to check them off, but it feels like it's very repetitive because she's doing the same things every single month and she's never actually seeing the progress of the overall debt payoff. She's also saving to buy a house at the same time. And so both of those goals are moving very slowly for her. So I encourage her to make an, a separate tracker for them so that she can see her overall progress even though it's likely gonna take her a long time to get through it since the action steps feel so repetitive. So just wanted to share that with you. Thought that might be helpful for someone. Let's talk about this new planner. I'm so excited. I reviewed the Full Focus Planner almost two years ago now. Um, I was just looking at some other goal planner options to share with you in case you didn't want to get the Power Sheets or the Moxie Life Planner. And this was one of the planners that I stumbled across. I asked them to send me that one 
for free and they were kind enough to send that one to me. I decided in that review video that it wasn't going to be a planner that I would use anytime soon. I did say that maybe someday I would consider using that planner um, and I think that day has finally come. I am going to give this planner a go for Q4 of this year. So the planner itself is much smaller. Like here is my Amplify planner that I've been using. That's about eight and a half by 11. And this you can see is much narrower and then shorter. Now the one negative is it is the wire O binding instead of the normal coil. That's definitely a negative for this planner compared to some of the other daily planner options that I've looked at. I love the hard cover though. And it's like a faux leather cover. Whereas like the Amplify planner is like a like a flexible cover. I do like the feeling of the Amplify planner, but this one definitely is a little bit more sturdy. It's also much pricier. I remember when I reviewed this in December and was like, oh my gosh, $30 a quarter for a planner is $120 a year and that's a lot. This one is more expensive than that. But they did also send me this one. Um, so I did not pay that, but if I use it and like it, I would consider paying that price. I realized like if it's something I use every day, it, even if when I, the, the struggle here, right, is when you do the math and you look at it for an entire year and you compare it to an annual planner that's like 50 or 60 bucks, yeah, it's a lot more expensive than that. But it's also a daily planner and I have a page for every day. It also has a weekly layout. It has a lot more to it. Um, so if you watched that review, um, honestly, I didn't go back and rewatch it. So I don't know what is different from this planner compared to that one, but I'm just gonna do a full flip through of this one as if we've never looked at it together before because it has been a while. So you've got your intro page, and then you've got like how to operate it and a content page. It's got a quote. This is the creator of the planner, Michael Hyatt. So then you start with your annual goals. So you write your annual goals here. Um, then it's got a place for a check mark. It's got a place where it says to, oh no, that's over here. Uh, the number, I guess you would just write number, like goal one, two, three, four. And then the quarter in which you would do the goal. But again, this is only a quarterly planner, so you would rewrite these every quarter. Then you get down to the goal details. And I do, I love these pages. So you've got the goal summary. It says, write your smarter goal. You know how I feel about smart goals, but it you doesn't actually have the smart, like, acronym on there. It just says, write your smarter goal. Then it says, is it an achievement goal or a habit goal? And then it has, what kind of category does it fall into? Spiritual, parental, intellectual, social, emotional, vocational, physical, avocational. I'm assuming that just means like for fun. That's a fancy word for fun. Marital and financial. Your key motivation. So has you write down your whys. What are some of the first steps to take to reach your goal? Your goal, what is the reward you're gonna get at the end of the goal? And then checking off the progress as you go. This is helpful for habit goals. It's got three months and 31 days for each of those months. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of those. That is a lot of goals. Like even for a quarter, twelve is a lot of goals. I, I mean, I guess if you're doing habit goals and it's like twelve, twelve habits is a lot too, though. Do they have one, two? So they have twelve spaces here as well. I guess if it's twelve annual goals, if I'm thinking of like I make that many quarterly goals, I don't know. I'm not quite sure if I would put like my quarterly goals here or like. That's actually, that's probably exactly what I would put on these pages. So I wouldn't need all 12 pages and that's fine. Uh, then we go into the monthly layout. This is an undated planner. It is a Monday start monthly layout, which I love. It also has quotes all throughout it, which I love. At the bottom of these monthly boxes, it's got space for like seven little check marks. I have no idea what that's for. No idea what I would use that for. Um, it is one of those planners where it's got like all of the months at the beginning. So you've got three monthly calendars at the beginning. Then you've got rolling quarters. And this is meant for like you put the future quarters that are not captured in this planner, right? So whatever quarter we're on, you would put that first one here and then you can kind of map it out at a glance. And then you've got the next quarter, the next quarter and the next quarter. Then you've got these daily ritual pages, which I, I remember these pages from the last time I reviewed this product. I love these pages. You kind of map out what you want your morning routine to look like. They're calling it a ritual, which I know there is definitely a difference between a ritual and a routine. Maybe that's something we can talk about at a future date. Um, but they also have workday startup, workday shutdown, and evening. And then we've got our ideal week calendar, which, you know, I love that and I'm here for that. Um, one for the whole qu quarter is it, like, I, so I change up my ideal week. It's what feels like somewhat regularly, um, but I still like the, the fact that there's a space for that in here. Then we have a page for key projects. So your upcoming tasks for the quarter. And I think you could use this, this planner both for personal or for like work. 
Um, so if I was using it for work, I'd put my work projects. I think I'm gonna use this for both kind of. I think all of the goal stuff I'm gonna use for personal, but then the day of the hours in the day that fall within work, I will use for work stuff. Um, so you've got a page and a half of that because then we go into a weekly piece. There is this weekly big three that is going to be before every single week. And so they have you do that for the first week here on this page. Then you have the daily pages. So you've got two pages for every single day, which is why it's just a quarterly planner and why it is pricier. And so at the top here, it says weeks remaining in the quarter. You've got a space to write the date. Then it says Monday and then your daily big three list your three most important tasks out a couple lines for those and a place to check it off. Then you've got your other tasks and then it encourages you, it encourages you to follow this key. It's almost like a bullet journal key where you've got done, waiting for, delegate, defer, and delete. Then you've got a place to check off your morning ritual, workday startup, workday shutdown, and evening. And then you've got the hourly section. Now, when I, when I first reviewed this planner, I was not using an hourly daily. And so I didn't understand what I would use it for. And now I am. And so that's what I'm excited to try. I love that it's got the half hour time slots. I love that it stops at nine because I'm not planning anything after nine. Um, what I don't love is it's right by the coil. So for righties, it's not like, it's not going to be ideal. The location of that hourly page. And then on the other side, it's got a big page for notes. This also feels like something I don't need because I don't really feel like I, I take that many notes throughout the day. Um, but if I'm using it for work and personal, I could see myself putting like personal tasks here and then my like work tasks over here. It's also got a quote at the top, uh, which I like. So you've got one of those pages for every day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday, each have their own full page. Then you have a weekly preview going into the next week. So you've got your biggest wins, your action review, you've got a list sweep. So you go through and look at your deferred delegated and your notes then what's coming up on the next week, personal and professional. Then you've got this one page weekly layout to kind of look at, like map out what is upcoming in the week. This is where Saturday and Sunday do have a little bit less space per day. Then you put your weekly big three and then it encourages you to do self-care planning. So it wants you to brainstorm for each of these categories, sleep, eat, move, connect, and relax, which I really, I like that incorporation. And then you move into the next week and it goes like this for the whole quarter. There's like no, it breaks it up every week, but there's no, um, no like monthly check-in before the next month. There's just those monthly pages, those monthly layouts at the beginning. It just keeps going until you get to the end of the quarter. So here's the last like weekly, the last Sunday and then the last like weekly overview into the next week. And then it's got like the same kind of review, but for a quarterly. So your wins, your action, what will you keep doing? What will you improve? What will you start? What will you stop? And then kind of, it tells you to go through your annual goals, your monthly calendar, kind of all the stuff to prepare for the next month. And then it's got a bunch of notes pages in the back with more quotes. I'm obsessed with how many quotes are in this planner. And then that's it. So let's go ahead and do a quick pen test. So I've got my paper mate flare, which is my favorite pen of all times. And if I can make that work, Great, I've got my Sharpie S gel, and then I've got my Sharpie pen, which is, this is the pen that I use in my plum paper planner. I don't, I don't love it, it's not my favorite pen, but it's my favorite pen on that paper. It's the only pen that really works for me on that paper. Um, I mean, the these types of pens, these like clicky types of pens work too, but they leave a ridging on the other side, so. This one is a little skippy. I don't know if that's the paper, or if that's just this pen. I don't really love how that wrote. The paper is very smooth. You know, one thing I kind of remember from the last time I looked at this planner is I feel like the paper was a lot like yellower and it actually is very bright white and I really like it. Okay, and then let's try this one. I really just hope this one doesn't shadow too much. Okay, it does not smear. So even though it's kind of smooth, it's not like the plum paper where it's gonna smear. Let's flip ourselves around. So it does shadow a little bit, but you know what? I mean, the Sharpie pen kind of does too. The, well, the Sharpie S gel definitely is not an option. It's, it's oh, that ridging is bad. I have a very heavy hand though. I probably will use the Paper Mate Flair. I mean, it does shadow a little bit more than like in the Amplify planner for me, um, or like really high quality paper in the Moxie Life, the Power Sheets. But I think it, I think it works. I think it totally works. It's also got the pages are numbered at the bottom. If that something that interests you, also the font has this kind of like brownish gold throughout it. It's not my favorite. Kind of just wish it was all black and gray, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to use this planner because this one is dated. That's the one thing also about this that I don't love. I kind of wish it was dated. I do have a thing for dated planners. That's like, that's what I was excited about with this one. 
But this one still feels like it's too much space. Still feels like it's too big. So I'm excited to give this one a go. And I like all of the other gold stuff that's incorporated in this one. Good morning. It's Saturday and I have a packed agenda today. So it is 7.30 and I am up and Adam, um, I'm in my office to clean it up and get ready for the day because I'm getting some professional photos done with my friend KB who did them last time. I loved how they turned out. We're doing just a mini session today with a product that I have been collaborating on with a planner company. I cannot share all the details, but I'm getting some photos taken with the product for um, social media for their website and all those things. So that's first things first that we're doing this morning. Then I have my Accelerate Your Goals live round course at 11. And then we have the Patreon monthly Q&A at 1. Normally I try to do this Patreon monthly Q&A towards the end of the month. But since next weekend is Sam's birthday, I'm doing it this weekend a little bit earlier than normal. But not a big deal. Then I need to get the replay up of the Q&A. Then I need to do some one-on-one -on -one prep. I have a couple one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching calls tomorrow. So I want to do some prep for those today. And then the Texas game. Texas plays at seven and I am meeting a friend and um, her boyfriend to go watch the game. Sam is still trying. Probably <laughs> not going things off with her tail. Sam is still in Texas, so I'm, it's just the three of us to watch the game. And Charlie's knocking everything down. Good morning. Come, we already snuggled in bed. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I, uh, I set my, I, I set my planner up to start at 7.30, but I actually got up, I set my alarm for 7, and got up, made coffee, and then went back to bed. I, I think I've said that before, it's like my favorite thing to do on the weekend. Um, so my coffee, I made iced coffee because I wanted it to kick in pretty fast. It's basically gone. But I spent 30 minutes this morning in bed, drinking coffee and snuggling with that cute kitty. But, oh, and watching Bones, which she just turned back on with her foot. <laughs> Hi, all right, I messed up. I realized yesterday that I, my quarterly video, favorites video, which went up on Monday, ha has an error in it. I completely forgot actually about the number one nonfiction book I read last quarter, and in fact, one of my top ones for the year, and that is Soundtracks by Johnny Cuff. This book is fantastic. Most of the time, I don't normally recommend generalized goal setting books. Most of the books I recommend, or most of the time I recommend you read books specific to your goals. You want to declutter, you read Decluttering at the Speed of Life. You want to have a morning routine, you read Good Morning, Good Life by Amy Landino. Like read a, a book that is very specific to your goals. But there are a couple general goal focused books that I like to recommend. And one of those now on my list is Soundtracks by John Acuff and I, I read it in, well actually I guess technically I finished it in July and so when I filmed that quarterly favorites video, but I filmed it in August and so my quarterly favorites videos like don't always line up perfectly but I guess, I guess maybe that's why I decided not to include it. Honestly I don't remember until I was like I filmed the video a long time ago and then I was getting the video ready to go live this week and was like wait what this book has to be talked about and so i just wanted to include it in this video i might give it an honorable mention in the next quarterly favorites but i already have another non-fiction book i want to mention in that favorites video so i just wanted to give it a shout out here great book i think if you struggle at all with the mindset part of goal setting which we all do to some degree but that book is about how to work through mindset struggles especially repetitive stories that we tell ourselves all the time and it was just fantastic so i wanted to make sure i gave a shout out and i just can't believe i didn't talk about it in that in that video so my day so far has been good the photo session was fantastic i we did some photos here in the office i i mentioned that was happening so i got some photos with charlie and they are <laughs> i just can't wait to get them back um and then we did some photos outside downstairs and I just like, um, the woman that I work with when I need photos here in the city is fantastic. I'm gonna leave her website link down below if you live around New York and you want photos. And she does so many things. So she does specialize a lot in headshots. She comes from the Broadway industry and she does fantastic headshots for performers. But she also, I mean, she does everything. Later today, she was headed to a one-year-old's birthday party was her, the second half of her day today. And it just, it's, she's fantastic. So. Uh, I can't wait to get all those photos back. I can't wait to show you the product in those photos. But then she also took some of just me by myself, some of me and Charlie, and then some of me with my Plan With Lake and merch. Since I have beautiful photos that Kayla took on the website of the merch, but not photos of me with the merch. And I'm just, I'm just excited.
You're such a good girl. Yeah, you're such a good girl. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this vlog here. I think uh, because after this is over, I have some work I wanna do and then I'm going to meet a friend and to watch the Texas game. And I'm just, I'm just, it's a good, it's a good Saturday. I miss Sam. I'm very excited for him to get home tomorrow. Um, but it's like a good, busy, productive, like it, I'm enjoying everything that I'm doing today. Like there are obviously pieces of any business of things that are not my favorite things to do, but teaching the accelerate your goal session today. And then the Patreon Q and a call that I have after that, like those are things I love to do. And I, the I have photos, I mean a photography session, that's fun. And then watching football, like what a great Saturday. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out this vlog here and go enjoy the rest of my day. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday focused on helping you achieve your goals. Thank you so much for watching. That was awkward, hold on, let me try that again. I'm, okay, I'm just gonna start this whole thing over, okay? Okay, cool, because it's weird. Thank you to, nope, that's wrong. I reviewed the full float, full, full focus banner. My day, mm, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Oh, the camera freaking fell. Oh my God, hold on, let's try.